Welcome to a new bike series called After the Hype, and this is where we look at a bike after all the hype and buzz is gone. These are interesting times that we're living through, and a lot of us don't have the cash to blow six or seven thousand dollars on our dream mountain bikes right now. But riding is still an essential part of staying physically and mentally healthy, so it's all about maximizing our return of investment in the used market. And today, we're going to be looking at the first generation YT Jeffsy and ask ourselves is this bike still relevant in today's landscape, and should you consider it as your next mountain bike? The first generation YTHFC was released in April of 2016 with a production run of about three years. While the idea of a 29er trail bike is extremely common these days, back when this bike was released, 27.5 was all the rage. So a lot of people were scratching their heads when this bike came out. But looking back, I realized this was a huge gamble for YT that definitely paid off as I credit this bike along with the evil following for changing the perception of 29 inch wheels. This bike proved you can have all of the benefits of a 29er and still have a load of fun. Yep. This bike's a ripper. And fun is the best way to describe this bike. It's not the longest, lowest, or slackest bike out there, but it's still one of the funnest. 140 millimeters of travel is plenty enough to get you in and out of trouble. And the bike's relatively short wheelbase means it still has that telepathic steering that's becoming extinct in modern trail bikes. When it comes to climbing, this bike has a familiar horse link rear suspension, which is the most common open source design out there. I wouldn't say it has the stiffest pedaling platform, but it pedals well enough when seated and you can always put the shock in trail mode for a stiffer feel on those extended climbs. I didn't mention this earlier, but the entire Jeffsy line is diverse and includes some 27.5 models and some affordable alloy versions. Because YT is consumer direct, that means they offered great value when they were new, which makes them absolute steals on the used market. As of this video, there were about 50 for sale on Pinkbike. Most of them were carbon with an average selling price of around $2,900. Now, let's talk about some gotchas with this bike. And the obvious one is dealer support. And because you're buying used, you technically don't have a warranty or crash replacement anyway. But what makes this doubly difficult is that you won't have dealer support for the proprietary stuff on the frame. And because of that, I would suggest this bike for the more advanced home mechanic kind of rider. Also, the spec on this bike evolved in some strange ways. For instance, the rear end is boost facing, but the fork isn't, which is going to make wheel upgrades a bit awkward. Also, early models had 12-speed SRAM drivetrains, but around the middle of the production run, they switched to 11-speed Shimano with some E13 thrown in. Now, there's nothing really wrong with that, but given the choice, I prefer to have the more common SRAM setup. And also, some bikes came with a race face turbine dropper, which is about as reliable as a flat tire. And finally, if you like to ride with a water bottle inside your front triangle, you should know that the space is extremely tight. So YT actually sells a special water bottle specifically made for this frame, which unfortunately holds only half a liter. Issues aside, every time I jump on this bike, I'm reminded of how fun bikes in this generation are. And that's exactly who this bike is for. This bike is for somebody who thinks today's bikes in this travel range are too heavy and just feel sluggish, especially in the corners. The suspension field is bang on too, with just enough feedback to keep you engaged, yet able to soak up the big bumps when needed. This Jeffsy really wants to get off the ground too, which adds to its playful nature, especially with a decent sized volume spacer in the rear shock. While the geometry numbers may look strange by today's standards, trust me when I tell you, the numbers will be the last thing you think about when you're riding this bike. A buyer for this bike is also somebody looking for a terrific deal, maybe as a second bike for themselves or significant others to get them into a really capable yet still fun trail bike. So there you have it. If you found this series useful, please leave a comment below and let me know which bike you'd like me to ride after the hype. Thanks for watching and remember, those trails don't get easier, you get better. We'll see you on the next one.